Hello and welcome to Mathematics with Simon. I'm Simon. Today we're going to look at the A-level mathematics topic of the binomial theorem for non-integers, so for non-whole numbers. So for instance, it's things like this, 1 plus x to the power 1 half. So we know by the binomial theorem that 1 plus x to the n equals 1 plus nx plus n n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed and so on, plus plus and so on. It's an infinite series. And this only works if the magnitude of x is, is less than 1. So here, if we put in um, n equals 1 half, we get 1 plus x to the power 1 half. So this is the square root of 1 plus x. And we can expand it out as an infinite series. 1 plus half x plus half times minus half x squared over 2 factorial plus half times minus half times minus 3 over 2 x cubed over 3 factorial plus a half times minus a half minus 3 over 2 minus 5 over 2 x4 over 4 factorial. And here we've just worked these out. So this is just a half x and then this is um, minus 1 eighth x squared. And this is, we've got 3, this 3 cancels with this 3 down there. So now you've got um, 2, 4, 8, 16, which is why it's like plus 16 here. And in this one, you've got a 5 on top, very obviously. So you're going to have this 3 will cancel with the 3 in the 4 factorial, because 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2. They'll cancel, and you get 4 times 2, you get 8, 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8. So 5 over 1 to 8. That was fun. Times x4. So this is the kind, and this, this series goes on and on. So we're just going to do an example here, which is 1.1 to the power 1 half. So in this case, we're putting in x as 0 0.1. So these are, this is the equation we've got on the last page. These are the sort of terms as they come out. And then the, with the exact answer, so if you actually work out 1.1 to the power 1 half, you know, with a calculator or a computer or whatever, you come to this. If you just use one term here, you get 1. You see, the more terms we use, the closer we get. If you use two terms like this, you get to 1.05. It's not that far off, actually, two terms. If you use three terms, 1.04875. So what's that? Correct to four sig figs. Then the next time, if you use four terms, again, it's not that many terms. 1.04881.25, so really close, so 5 sig figs, and then 5 terms, 1.04880.86, so it's correct except for the very last digit, so, so um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sig figs. It's pretty impressive stuff, so it's converging quite quickly, and the reason is because if you keep taking powers of 0.1, the terms get small quite quickly. So it's an infinite series, but you don't need that many to get a good approximation. Here's another example, square root of 17. And it's very clever we can work out the square root like this in a series, because square roots are quite, are quite hard to work out, actually. This is quite clever. So in this case, we're using the same series here. But what we're doing is we're saying square root of 16 point one, sixteen plus one, so seventeen is sixteen plus one. So the square root of sixteen plus one, we basically take out four, which is which is the square root of sixteen. So then this drops sixteen drops to one. Because basically we just divide all of this by sixteen and then that square root so that's four. So we bring four out and then we get one plus one over sixteen to the power half. And then we use this series here with x equal to one over sixteen. So you get this, 1 plus a half times 1 over 16, which is x, plus a half minus a half, 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 16 squared, a half minus a half minus 3 over 2, 1 over 3 factorial, 16 cubed. It's quite easy, although there's a lot of it, it's quite easy. And then if we just crunch out what these terms are, just use one term. So the actual answer is 4.1231056. Just use one term, you get 4. It's not that far off. You use two terms, 4.125, not bad. Three terms comes to 4.123, closer. And then, you know, right down at the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, 
We're almost there. It's only the last digit that's not quite right. It's really impressive, isn't it? Um, so let's try an example. Okay, so this one, this one here we did four times and we did the terms in the brackets. And then here, just on this one, we just multiplied through by four to show you what it's like. Does that make sense? So here we've done four times one plus 0.03125 and then here we've we've times the four through so we get four plus four times 0.03125 which goes like this four plus 0.125 is 4.125 and so on so it's just a slightly different way of writing it but it gets to the same answers and it basically shows that after five terms, or even four terms, you're as accurate as you need for most practical purposes in life, unless you're launching a rocket ship or something. Um, but if you're me measuring a garden fence, you're good. So, nine to the power one-third, nine doesn't really have to be in brackets here, does it? Should we try and take the nine out of bracket brackets, or should we just not worry too much about that? Nine to the power one-third. Yay! So the thing is, so we know 8 to the power 1 third is 2, just, just so that would be easy, but we're using the same formula. So firstly we put in n as 1 third, so we get 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 x squared over 2 factorial. We'll just put in the factorial, but it is the same because 2 factorial is 2. Plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. This should be x4 over 4 factorial. Okay, so x cubed over 3 factorial plus, you know, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, x4 over 4 factorial. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write um, 9 to the power 1 over 3 as what we're basically going to do is write it as 8 plus 1 to the power 1 over 3 and then we're going to take out 8 to the power 1 over 3 so we just take out 2 basically as a factor and then we'll pop it in this formula and we'll use 1 8 as x I'm not going to do this because we've done two of those in practice but basically what this binomial theorem allows you to do is it allows you to work out any root I mean you know things to the power 2 thirds things to the power 1 fifth things to the power 1 tenth uh, things to the power 100. It's all possible. It's ever so clever. I hope you like this video. We liked making it. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll send you more stuff. We'd love to hear your ideas and most of all I hope you enjoy your mathematics.